Welcome to the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen, where we share gourmet recipes at a low budget wonder. Now check this out. Here I've got a five pound bag of frozen crawfish. It runs about four dollars a pound this way, but when you don't have access to live crawfish, this is a good alternative. The directions will often instruct you to keep them in the bag while they thaw, but I like to place them in a large bowl and separate all of the loose pieces. Because the crawfish are pre-cooked and shipped frozen, very often the claws and the legs will break off during the process. And it's not a bad idea to sort through here and get them all separated. As you can see, there's quite a bit. And as I place the crawfish in one bowl, the claws and legs will sift down to the bottom of the other. And as you can see, there's a tremendous size difference between some of the crawfish. The larger crawfish claws are worth saving and it'll be up to you which pieces you decide to keep, if any, or all for that matter. Just realize that there's plenty of meat that you can be getting out of these claws. And even though you've got all the tail meat to pull from all of these crawfish after they're cooked, it would sure be a shame to not take advantage of all the claw meat you could be getting out of all these pieces as well. The next thing you want to do is run some cold water right over the top of the crawfish and fill up the entire bowl so they can start thawing. But remember these are like little ice cubes and it's not sanitary to not leave some running water into the bowl while they thaw. Not only does this keep you free from bacteria, but it tends to thaw the crawfish much quicker this way. In the meantime you want to start preparing your boil. I've got some hot water here cooking in the bottom of this large pot. And over medium heat, I'm going to start adding my ingredients, starting with this crawfish boil seasoning. And this can tend to be too spicy for some people, so I cut it with some tomato bouillon. That way we get the heat and the flavor. And it's always a good idea to add an onion as well. Sometimes I'll even add some crushed ginger. But you're definitely going to need a stick of butter. And even though this seasoning's pretty instant, it's a good idea to let that butter melt down and that onion soften up during the duration of that crawfish thawing. And that could be upwards of a good hour or so. Just be sure to taste it first to make sure it's to your liking. And if it's done right, it's not going to be soft and soup-like, it's going to be bold and spicy. Without that strong flavor, your crawfish are going to be bland. So be sure that it's as salty as seawater. By now the crawfish should be thaw, and you can just run all the water out of the bowl, pour it straight down the sink, then take them back over to the stove and pour them right into the seasoned boil. Now if you're cooking live crawfish, you can use the exact same recipe. The only difference is the amount of cooking time. For the frozen crawfish, all we're looking to do is reheat and reconstitute that flavor. But for live crawfish, you want to cook for about 15 minutes, then come back and kill the heat. For frozen, you're going to kill the heat as soon as you place them in the pot. Then there's the soak time, and this takes approximately another 15 to 20 minutes is all. But it's the most important step, because this is where they get all their flavor. Then you can just strain them out into a bowl. Keep in mind though, most crawfish boils add corn, potatoes, and andouille sausage to the mix. So that's something you'll want to consider when you're preparing your crawfish boil. But don't think for one second you should throw that broth out. Get it strained and saved for other recipes. This is great in jambalaya for example, and it can be the base of many soups or even pasta sauces, so hang on to it. The crawfish, however, is really good with more of that crawfish boil seasoning sprinkled over the top after you pull them out of the pot. Some folks like to even toss it in garlic butter, but let me show you how to eat crawfish. All you have to do is twist the tail from the body and you can suck the head, drink all that broth juice, lots of flavor in there. Now just get a firm grip of that tail meat and the end of the tail shell and you should be able to just pull it straight out like this. Another way of doing it, just twisting it straight through again, but you can remove the first layer of that tail shell all the way around, it comes right off, and then you'll have more tail meat to grip and grab and pull out. Sometimes it's easier this way. Now all you gotta do is serve them up. 
But before I forget, and I did, the claw meat is just as easy to remove as well. Just grab a hold of the pincher, twist, and pull that straight through. It doesn't always work this smoothly, but nine times out of ten, you'll get it. And there you have it, frozen crawfish boil right here in the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients.